Today we're going to talk about lymphoidal tissue. We want to look at the general organization, the cells that are there. We want to look at uh, fluid flow, blow, both blood and lymph fluid. We'll have two parts. Part one has to do with lymph nodes uh, and the gut associated lymphoidal tissue. And part two has to do with spleen and thymus. Lymphoidal tissue, part two, spleen and thymus. Part two has to do with spleen and thymus, but we want to describe the organization of the cells, talk about energy movement inside there, and trace uh, the cells and fluid through these organs. Now, just like lymphoidal tissue that we've already discussed, the spleen is a, a very uh, unique organ, uh, and the thymus is what we'll be talking about today. The spleen is a secondary organ, the thymus is a primary organ. Now the function of the spleen, which is a secondary organ, it's an antigen-dependent organ, uh, is filtration of the blood, uh, destruction of age uh, erythrocytes, the pitting of reticular sites, to getting rid of the ribosomes that are inside there that makes the reticular site uh, erythrocyte. Uh, and it's a production site for lymphocytes and antibodies and differentiation of the lymphocytes into plasma cells and to activate lymphocytes. Those are all the functions uh, of the spleen. They have an open circulation and a closed circulation. Uh, whole blood is dumped into the bilirubin strands uh, or the splenic strands and they have to migrate through that to re-enter the circulation. Uh, and, uh, and you have endothelial cells, special ones that will get rid of cells. As the red blood cells age, they get less pliable. Uh, they linger too long and the macrophages eat them up. In contrast, the thymus uh, is a primary organ. It needs to have energy independent development, energy independent. And the function is produce T lymphocytes in an energy free environment. And as a consequence, we have a blood thymus barrier in the cortex of the thymus. Uh, to prevent antigens from gaining access to uh, naive T, T lymphocytes before uh, they have s just sorted out self versus non-self. So if we look at the spleen, the overall structure of the spleen, the vascular arrangement of the spleen, uh, and the white pulp. White pulp is a central uh, artery of <coughs> lymphatic tissue around the central artery, known as a paraarterial sheath, uh, and there's follicles where you have the B lymphocytes located in there. The red pulp is the other structure. You have um, the red pulp is where you have venous sinuses, you've got pulp cords, Bilroff strands, and the marginal zone is a very important region in through there, as we'll see later on. That's how whole blood is dumped in the extravascular space. So the spleen. Um, note that there is no cortex and medulla, they're just red pulp and white pulp. So here you see the spleen, there's a capsule around the spleen as you see in through there. And then this is white pulp in through there and then red pulp. White pulp, red pulp. Uh, this is a capsule and the trabeculae. So what we see here, the pink here, is actually trabeculae that's projecting uh, in, uh, in through there, capsule. Uh, around the thing with uh, uh, tobacco blood vessels running from the capsule into the individual uh, streams as we'll uh, talk about later on. So in the spleen you have the uh, capsule, you have the terminal centers of the white pulp and the red pulp. White pulp, red pulp, follicle with the T lymphocytes inside there, with the B lymphocytes inside there. So, uh, uh, we see the capsule of the spleen and you see reticular fibers. So these are type 3 collagen fibers that p provide the reticular network. Uh, and there's also reticular cells inside there uh, as well. Spleen, we can see the capsule, uh, the, the white pulp, and the red pulp uh, going through there as we see. Uh, and uh, these are the different portions that were mentioned. We see a uh, central artery coming through there and a paraterial sheath. That's what we see right here, the paraterial sheath through a central artery. 
Uh, and then uh, this artery branches out through there and stops. Uh, some of it returned to the venous supply for the closed circulation that we can't see, but also the open circulation. Right in the marginal zone, right in through there, is where a whole blood, that's the marginal zone, is, is dumped uh, into the Bill Roth strands, as we see the splenic strands. So again, it's the central artery, almost never in the center, but the central artery with uh, 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 flicker cells located in through their central artery, parotorial sheath uh, of, uh, of lymphoidal tissue in through there. So we can see the spleen here, the white pulp, the red pulp, uh, in the marginal zone. Uh, and in the marginal zone, uh, here we can see the paraarterial sheath. Uh, we can see the central artery. And in the marginal zone and through there is where we have this penicillary arteries. So penicillary means branching, like, uh, like fingers branch from a hand. Uh, and this is where the arteries end. They don't attach the capillaries and they open and close or let blood right into the Billroth strands. So this is a marginal zone as I mentioned to you before. So these are little arteries that come in through there that uh, dump whole blood in through there and need to squeeze back through to get back into, into the vasculature. And so here we can see uh, the, the sinuses uh, that runs in the, in, in the red pulp and through there, and what's between the sinuses is the Billroth strands or the splenic strands, and that's where a whole blood is dumped uh, in through there. You can see the reticular fibers uh, that are, are formed in through there, uh, reticular fibers in the Billroth strands, as you can see. Uh, there is a reticular network, uh, but the reticular fibers uh, in the spleen uh, uh, actually are from the mesoderm. And we can see them right in through there, the reticular network, and how the reticular uh, fibers form the Billroth strands uh, in between uh, the sinuses which are located in the red pulp. Uh, here we see the penicillary arteries again, uh, multiple ones here, uh, and we see macrophages in the Billroth strands. So these are dumping whole blood in the Billroth strands that have to squeeze back through. Uh, and here we see uh, plasma cells, there's a host of plasma cells in through there, and macrophages that we see already gobble up something. Macrophages are involved in presenting antigens to the uh, uh, reactive immune cells. Uh, and so here we see the penicillary arteries right in through here in the marginal zone. And this is the Bill Roth strand, which is between one sinus and another sinus. All that in through there is the Bill Roth strand, and you see the penicillary artery is empty into that strand. In order for blood to get back into the bloodstream, it has to go through these cells here. Uh, these are the cells of the vascular sinus, and these are known as littoral cells. And we can see them again here, lined up kind of like picket fences uh, along and through there. They're a taller endothelium than you normally see. And here we can see them. Actually, they're quite long cells, macrophage right in through there. But this is how uh, the red blood cells have to squeeze through between these cells to get back into the vascular tear. So that, that's part of the extra vascular sojourn of cells. So filtration occurs by removing red blood cells and pitting uh, reticocytes as we see and we see literal cells uh, in through there. And as I mentioned, red blood cells, as they're aged, are less pliable to come through there and macrophages eat them up if they're not. This is our book's uh, rendition of, of uh, cells going from the uh, penicillary arteries, uh, from the blood going from the penicillary arteries. Whole blood is dumped in through this. So anything is in blood is going to be in Bill Roth strands. And then uh, the cells have to migrate through these uh, literal cells uh, of this to get back into the, into the bloodstream. So in our slide uh, 47 of spleen, we see the uh, capsule, the trabeculae in through there, the white pulp, the red pulp, uh, and you can see the germinal centers there in the, in the, in the white pulp. So uh, here we see the central arteries. This is the uh, uh, paraarterial sheath of uh, lymphocytes in through there with the B cells and the T cells on the outside. Uh, Billroth uh, 
strands. That's actually wrong there. This is a trabeculum running right through the bilateral strands is what's in between the sinuses and we hear the sinuses. So this would be bilateral strands running right through there. Uh, uh, not there, but it would be over here. This is trabeculae. Um, uh, blood flow in the spleen. You can see that blood comes in through the uh, trabeculae from the capsule and then goes around the uh, goes through the central artery, which is a paraterial sh sheath, um, and then uh, some blood uh, goes through these penicillary arteries and they dump into bilateral strands that go back in the air. Others go, uh, stay in the vasculature. They don't go into the extravascular sojourn. So there's two. There's, this is closed circulation. This is an open circulation with sphincters along the way that regulate these and that's really what we're seeing is the little sphincters uh, in the pencil arteries that we saw before. So in the spleen you have a capsule, uh, you have uh, uh, blood uh, comes in through the uh, paraterial sheaf and then the bilateral uh, uh, strands is where pencil arteries dump their blood. Uh, that's the open circulation and the closed circulation. They have a vessel that runs right to the uh, through the venous sinus, sinus which ultimately uh, bl blood would be uh, would be removed. So uh, in the extravascular uh, uh, fluid, whole blood from these bill from these uh, penicillary arteries are dumped into the bilateral strand, and they have to migrate through to get into this sinus to ultimately uh, to return to the bloodstream. Next is the thymus. The thymus is a little different, and there there's a growth pattern. It's uh, bigger in the younger uh, person than it is in the adult. They have a reticular uh, network as well. However, these are actually epithelium from the endoderm, not mesothelium. Um, and it has a cortex. So it has a cortex and a medulla. You have absence of antigens in the extra, uh, uh, in the cortex because you have uh, that produces a, a microenvironment for development of lymphocytes that have not seen uh, antigen yet and to help the thymus uh, sort out self versus non self cells um, uh, and uh, the blood thymus barrier uh, is, is there to help maintain that environment. So there's a cortex medulla antigen free environment in the cortex as you see. So as a maturation, we can see in a youngster, you have a fairly large uh, thymus, but it's fragmented and a lot smaller uh, in the adult. And here we can see the actual growth phase. This is a newborn and a 30-year-old where uh, the thymus becomes fat and less cortex and medulla uh, with advancing age uh, in the thymus. So it's early development and then it regresses uh, with time. And here we see the reticulum cell network that goes in through there, the reticular fibers that go through there. Uh, and these are epithelium as opposed to endothelium, as I mentioned to you. You have trabeculae, you have the capsule going in through there, but these are actually epithelial cells that form this uh, reticular uh, network. So in the cortex, you have the absence of exogenous ones as a microenvironment and a blood a thymus barrier only located in the cortex. And part of that barrier is the endothelial cells themselves or continuous uh, capillaries, but also uh, uh, the reticulum cells uh, uh, phagocytize anything that might go out as you see in that cell right there. It has a kind of sheath, the reticular cells are around them. So here we see the cortex and the medulla, and in the very center we have these hyacinth corpuscles. So if you look back here, you can see the reticular cells making this thing in, in the medulla, which is going to be the, uh, the corpuscles. Uh, so here we see in the medulla, there's a corpuscle right there, it has a corpuscle right here. Uh, these are the septum, this is the capsule, uh, and cortex, uh, and the medulla. Uh, in the cortex, we have the reticulum cells, the big ones here, the big nuclei. Uh, euchromatic big nucleolus, and then we have uh, lots of uh, lymphocytes in the cortex, and we see some mitotic activity because you got cell division uh, in the cortex. But also, we have 
a T cell death. So if a, a cell is going to it's going to attack itself, it's killed before, while it's in an antigen-free environment, uh, before uh, it, um, uh, it it has a chance uh, to develop. So there's a growth of cells, but also a selection of cells uh, in the thymus, and that's one of the reasons you have uh, the antigen-free environment. So you have the cortex and the medulla uh, that we see in there, and here we see the um, uh, the hazard corpuscles uh, that are located in medulla and diagnostic for the, for the thymus. So in terms of uh, clinical correlation, infections often cause enlargement of lymph nodes, enlargement of the lymph node, uh, and malignant tumor cells can also metastasize via the lymph node vessels as well. And so uh, that's one of the reasons they remove regional lymph nodes if you have a cancer in a certain location. So the lymphoidal tissue is throughout the body. We talked about the thymus and the spleen here, but there's also those associated with the uh, digestive tract. Uh, there's also those associated with the respiratory tract, uh, but also uh, there's in the bone marrow and lymph nodes are main players in the process. So we talk about thymus bone marrow for the T and B cells. So that's the structure of the lymphoidal components. You've got the spleen, the thymus, lymph node, lymphocytes are going out through. And that ends part two of lymphoidal tissue, spleen, and thymus. Many illustrations uh, in this presentation were modified from books and sources that are indicated here. We want to thank the original sources for uh, the information that was modified for this presentation. Thank you.